So it might be a little hard to tell by looking at us now that less than a year ago, Patrick and I were on stage performing with the National Ballet of Canada in tights. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely amazing how fast you can get out of shape. Uh, Chris and I, we both work physically for all our life and now I have a hard time going up a flight of stairs. So to put our story into perspective, we'd like to explain a little bit about the professional ballet career. After studying from a young age, dancers typically start their careers straight out of high school. At 18, you sometimes as uh, young as 16. It's highly physical with long, intense hours, usually from 10 to 6.30. Uh, and this is in the rehearsal process. Once uh, performances start, the hours can vary wildly, um, but the longest days can go from 10 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. So it's taxing on the body, it takes a toll. Uh, very few dancers go through their career without at least one serious injury, often many. In some sense, you age quickly in dance. We actually, we usually call each other old, around 25, that's when we start. We call it dancer's years, which is, I guess, like dog years, where 25 would mean 40, 35 is closer to 70, fortunately. <laughs> um, so it's designed for a young body. It's, that's the paradox of dance. Uh, Unlike other art form where you can, you can grow, you can mature into it, you could be an actor at any age. Um, in dance, you're just starting to get the subtlety of it and it, it's time for you to stop. Um, and that's difficult. Um, people are always curious, like, is there a cutoff age? Is there, it's, not, it's not that clear, it's, and it varies a lot between individual, but uh, I guess we can say around 35 is usually the, the average retirement year for dancers. Right. And uh, at this point, you have to ask yourself, like, what's next? And uh, it's a really tough decision. Uh, first off, it's, it's emotionally difficult. We have to decide to leave the group of people who uh, has become pretty much our family, with whom we've spent most of our adult lives with. Uh, we've gone through very stressful times together. We've gone on tour for long periods of time together. And because of the nature of the work, we're very physically close. Um, we're, we're physically touching each other a lot. It's borderline inappropriate. <laughs> It's true, but, but for us, it's, they're truly our family. We, we both met our wives at the ballet. Uh, they're performing actually tonight. Uh, also, I have two young kids that grew up backstage watching me dance, and it's, uh, really, my family is there. And um, my son was actually performing with the company also last January in Washington. In a different sense, it's also difficult because this is all we know. We don't have this, uh, this, this, this sense of skills that we have. Right, and it's also like, difficult because uh, it's just a very competitive field, uh, dance. So moving up in the industry becomes even more restricted. Uh, just like in a lot of sports, or if not every sport, not, not every player can become a coach. And this is where we found ourselves, I guess, now it's almost a year ago. Um, and strangely enough, there was four, was four male dancers, we're all friends, actually, it's a strange, and we decided to retire at the same time. And this is when you realize that dance is truly the ultimate non-transferable skills. Everything you've been working on <laughs> for the past 20 years, like jumping, lifting girls, being somewhat flexible for us, we were never very that flexible, um, putting stage makeup, which is a strange skill. Um, it doesn't mean that much in the, in the rest of the world. So, Looking at it, for us it made sense to try to acquire a new skill and return to school. Right, and we tried to prepare for this as much as we could. We started taking courses while we were working, redoing some high school subjects. Uh, interestingly, we found we enjoyed some of the subjects that uh, we really dreaded when we were younger, like calculus. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is, but um, we, we think it has to do with spending a very long time in a very subjective field. and with something like calculus, it has a lot of structure, so it sort of gave us a sense of balance. Yeah, it's true. But in some ways, nothing could really prepare us for our, our first semester. No. no, a lot of our colleagues ask us what the hardest part has been or what the hardest part is, and for me, it's, it's really just the constant workload. It seems like the work is never done and there's no, there's no time to relax. Yeah, it, that was a bit of a surprise for us. Like, like Chris said, we work long hours uh, and we actually enjoy working. I'm not very good when I'm not busy, actually. And uh, like the past year, we would go home at 11 after a show, try to fit in a chapter of calculus or between performance do a chapter of chemistry, computer science. So this was a bit of a surprise. And some of it is an adjustment. We've been out of school uh, for a long time, for me a really long time. My gap here was more like a two decades long. Uh, <laughs> 
And some of it is also has to do with the way dancers learn. We learn by repetition, we learn as reflex. We often use a phrase like it's in our body. So the music goes and it goes. You can't approach school like that. I think the material is so vast that there is no way for you to do that. I would love to be able to do my problem set 10 times, but I can barely do it once. Um, so that's difficult. Some of it, I don't know, some of it is harder to define. Uh, I always compare it a lot like having kids. Uh, you can tell stories about how difficult it is, but un unless you experience, you don't really know. <laughs> yeah, another thing we get asked a lot is, is, how are we dealing with the age difference? And while we're used to working with young people, um, it's, it's a slightly different relationship. Back at the company, we had, a, uh, we had some seniority, whereas at the first year of university, the playing field's pretty much leveled. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a big issue for me. I don't think about it all the time, but once in a while I sit back and I'm like, okay, so they're closer in age to my son than they are to me. I'm older than all the TAs. I'm <laughs> older than some professors. So it's strange, I guess for my classmate, it'd be like for them to go back to first grade at 18. And uh, I, I know that maybe some of you think like, oh, at 18, I would kill it and get that perfect GPA. <laughs> uh, but for us, we're actually a bit behind. Like we don't know our letters, we don't know our numbers. And exam time comes, and we hope we're potty trained, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, but although it's early in our academic career, we are finding that some of our skills are carrying over. Um, more than just raw talent, being a dancer involves work ethic and discipline. To, and to give you an idea, dancers start every day with a warm-up class, and it's working on the same steps, it's the same movements, you're always trying to improve upon these, and even sometimes seemingly minute details. So it can be a bit monotonous. But, and this is something we've done every day since we were children. Yeah. So yeah, for, for, getting, for us, getting to class is kind of second nature. I guess another factor is that we're used to to perform under pressure. When you dance in front of 3,000 people, usually nerves is an issue. It surely was for me. And I think there's a parallel there with university. I think in dance, it doesn't matter how good you are in the studio, you have to shine on stage. You have to be good there. And in university, maybe unfortunately, it doesn't matter how much you, you think you know the material, you have to know it when the exam comes. Right, and dancers have some certain rituals that they like to do to to deal with the stress and the nerves. Uh, some people will have a, maybe a lucky t-shirt that they wear under their costume or tap the floor or, in Patrick's case, kiss the floor. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Uh, and some of this carry over, some of those skills to be calm, to, be, uh, to focus yourself before a stressful period. Uh, some of them doesn't. I, for me, a big thing on stage was always to, uh, to get into character, to really feel uh, forget about myself and really go and feel what, what the, the character would feel. Uh, in the exam situation, to be there and be like, okay, what would the integral do right now? It, it's not the same thing, right? <laughs> no, but, but here we are now, and it's been a big whirlwind of a year, and it's been a lot of big changes. And in many ways, it feels like we're kind of going backwards, going to university after working for so long. But uh, to us, you, we feel like we have to take one step back to take two steps forward. And in another way, I don't think it's that different than any other student in their first year. Where it's a transition period for us, and it's, we have to redefine yourself and try to find a new direction in our life. Right, and this is not a success story. It's, uh, it's more about the transition. Um, we're constantly trying to evolve and adapt to what's next. So do we miss it, the art form, the, the stage? Um, of course we do. It's been a very big part of our lives um, for a very long time. It has defined who we are since we were children. Uh, it's been more than just our careers, though. It's been our physical exercise. It has been our social life. And it's been, sometimes it's a form of therapy for us. It, a lot of things disappear once you're on stage. Stage is a very special place. That is, it's nothing quite like it. Um, but that being said, we are grateful. We, we had a chance to fulfill a dream of ours. We had this wonderful career that we got to dance. And, and doing so, we built this foundation that's it's not perfect, but it's a foundation that allows to come and step off and explore something new. Absolutely, and going forward, we're also very lucky to have this opportunity to explore other fields and to have a chance to redefine who we are now. And it's, it's strange that we, it seems like we're doing complete 180 in direction, but uh, we often talk about this, and I think it's important to think that Art is not exclusive to art. I think art is everywhere. We, 
we are a new setting now, but we see it in the lab, we see it in the lecture room. It, it's, and I think wherever we end up being, which we're not sure and we're a bit nervous about it, I think our artistic path will be a big part of it. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you.